Hi, I'm Chris, co-founder of Mist.io, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to Mist CLI, a brand new way for managing multi-cloud infrastructure without ever leaving your command line. With uh, Mist CLI, you can manage your VMs in Linode, alongside your VMs in vSphere and your Kubernetes clusters, or any other mix of resources coming from the 20 plus integrations that we've written with uh, public and private infrastructure platforms. In order to use it, you will need a MIST installation. So in this video, I will take it from the top. First, I will show you how you can install MIST in a Kubernetes cluster in Linode. Then I will show you how you can install and configure the MIST CLI itself. And finally, I will walk you through its entire functionality. Let's dig in. Okay, so first, uh, to install MIST's Open Source Community Edition, I will need a new Kubernetes cluster. I'm in uh, Linode's portal and I'm going to create one from uh, here. Uh, let's name it MIST. I will put it in Atlanta, latest version of Kubernetes. And I will also select the option with uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 4 CPU cores. Let's hit create now. Uh, this will take a few minutes. Uh, once it's ready, we uh, can proceed with uh, the next steps of uh, the installation. My cluster is now ready. You can see it here. I will just download this kubeconfig file uh, so I can manage my cluster with kubectl. Let's head over to the cell now. Here I will do a number of things. Uh, first of all, I will connect my new uh, Linode cluster to kubectl. I will then install MISTER using Helm, and finally I will start testing MIST CLI. Uh, let's begin with uh, kubectl. With uh, this command, I'm adding the kubeconfig file I downloaded from Linode's portal to my environment variables. All right, let's uh, test it now with uh, kubectl config view. Here it is. All right, everything looks good. And uh, let's check out the nodes with kubectl get nodes. Yep, everything is up and running great. On to Helm now. I will uh, add the mist repo using this command here. And I will also update it with uh, Helm repo update. I will install now the latest data from uh, the 4.7 branch. Uh, by the time you watch this, the stable version will be out, so no need to add the minus minus version part. Also note that uh, here I don't need to override any parameters. For more customized uh, installations, you will need to check out our uh, readme file. So this will take about five minutes. And uh, once it's ready, uh, we uh, will be back to uh, see it in action. Helm has completed the installation. To check out my new MIST instance, I will need to get the ingress IP as uh, shown here. Let's copy and paste this. Um, please note that it might take some time for the uh, IP to uh, get ready. Okay, here's the IP. I will also need uh, the credentials of a MIST admin user. I will uh, get them uh, using this command here. Let's copy and paste it as well. Here they are. Uh, as you see, I get the auto-generated username, uh, password, and uh, API token. Uh, please keep in mind here that this is just a quick and dirty way to install and test MIST. For a more permanent setup, we strongly recommend setting up DNS and TLS. You can find out more in MIST's readme file. Well, let's head over to the browser now to check out the new installation. Here's the ingress IP I got. Okay, and this is the new uh, MIST uh, instance. I will log in here with the auto-generated credentials I showed you earlier, just to make sure everything is working fine. And yes, everything looks great. 
So I won't do anything else here since I want to show you how our CLI works. So let's dig into that now. To install uh, Mesh CLI, just head over to its GitHub page and follow the instructions here. Uh, Mesh CLI is just a single binary that works great on Windows, Linux as well as on uh, Mac OS. If you're on Mac OS uh, like myself, please note that you will need a bus version higher than 4. Back to the command line, I have already installed uh, Mesh CLI here. So now I will create a new context with the API token I got. Uh, the command for this uh, looks like this, is mest config at context with the name of your new context, in this case Linode, the API token I got, and the IP of my mest uh, server. So here it is. Uh, contexts are especially helpful when running multiple uh, mest orgs and or installations. For example, when you have an org for customer A and one for customer B. Uh, you can see the whole uh, list of orgs I have added here with the mist config uh, get context command. Here it is. And you can also switch between them with uh, mist config uh, use context, uh, let's say uh, prod, and then back to uh, Linode. Now that I added the context, the next step is to add some clouds to manage. As you see here, MES supports more than 20 public and private clouds, hypervisors, container hosts, uh, Kubernetes, and even bare metal servers. In every case, uh, you need to provide some sort of API credentials that MIST will use to communicate with the native RESTful APIs. The exact type of credentials depends on the cloud that you're trying to add. In the case of Linode, it's just an API key. Let's add the Linode cloud first. In this case, uh, you will need Linode's API token, and you can add it with this uh, mist add cloud command. Uh, the API token, the name, and the provider type. Let's add it here. Uh, you can also do this uh, using uh, files in JSON or a YAML. So this is the same example with a YAML file. In this case, uh, you still need to do mist cloud minus F and the name of your uh, file. Uh, this is really helpful when you would like to add multiple clouds to your uh, mist account. Uh, all right, let's uh, check it out now. Uh, if everything is okay, yes, here's the new Linode cloud I added. And let's also check for the VMs. The two VMs I have I had running already and the three ones from my Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, everything looks good. Let's switch now to another account uh, where I have added uh, more resources uh, to show you additional functionality. So let's check it out. Uh, I have added several clouds here, uh, both public and private ones. The first thing I wanted to show you is how you can search for resources. We all spend a lot of time looking for things in our cloud accounts, but now that everything is connected to MIST, finding the resources you need is very simple. For example, with MIST Get Machine, you get a list of all the VMs and containers you're running in your accounts, or you can even filter uh, with uh, minus minus cloud Linode for just the VMs running on Linode or just uh, the ones on vSphere. You can also search uh, based on uh, a string. So for example, with minus minus search, LKE, I will get a list of all the VMs I have with uh, LKE in their name. These lists can be exported to alternative formats so uh, you can later import them to other tools. So back to the Linode example, I could export this to JSON. Here it is. Or let's do it in YAML, same thing. I can even select specific columns to export. Let's say, for example, that I'm interested only in the name and cost of these VMs. Here it is. Uh, or let's export it to CSV so it's easier to create a report in Excel for uh, management. Here it is again. I showed uh, several examples with machines, but the same commands can be used for other resource types uh, as well. 
So for example, uh, let's uh, get a list of all the volumes that I have on Linode. Here they are. Or let's just get a specific volume again from Linode and export it in YAML. So here are all the details coming from this volume in Linode. Besides looking for things, you also want to do stuff like uh, reboot VMs or uh, destroy them. It is fairly easy to do this uh, with uh, MEST as well. Let's say, for example, that I would like to reboot this VM or uh, I could uh, destroy it with uh, something like a MEST destroy machine uh, app server. Uh, the most painful action is creating new VMs. And that's because you have to remember all sorts of slugs, IDs, names, etc. With MIST, you can still go crazy with that, but there are also a lot of quick and simple ways to provision stuff. Let's say, for example, that you have AWS and Linode, and you just want the cheapest uh, VM with two cores and two gigabytes uh, of RAM. Obviously, nobody can remember pricing, but MIST can help you with that. Check out this command. Uh, here, I'm asking MIST to create a new VM based on a Debian image with two cores, two gigabytes of RAM, and the dry true parameter, uh, which uh, asks uh, MIST not to pull the trigger, but so what it is about to do. So, yep, here it is. What MIST did in the background now is that it went over all the available sizes and prices across the clouds that I have connected and came up with the best option. In this case, it's uh, Linode because it's uh, the cheapest one. Uh, let's just remove the dry part now and uh, provision it. And while this is happening, let me show you how you can provision uh, VMs uh, using files as input. So let me open a file I have prepared. Here you see a similar VM like the one I provisioned earlier. Uh, let's just close this. And now with mist create machine, minus F and machine YAML, I will create this one as well. This is really helpful when you often provision similar types of uh, VMs. You can just keep them in files and uh, reuse them. All right, now that I have done this, uh, let's see if everything is ready. Uh, with minus minus search and VM. Yep, the VMs are about to be booted. All right. Immutable resources treated like cattle are nice and all, but sometimes you just have to resort to good old SSH troubleshoot stuff. MIST lets you centrally manage your SSH keys and then access your VMs even without having private keys locally. Uh, let's say, for example, that I would like to uh, SSH to the VM I created previously with MIST SSH Chris VM. Uh, MIST is now tunneling my connection to this VM and here it is, a fully featured uh, cell with, let's say, top and everything ready. All right, let's exit now. The last thing I wanted to show you today is metering. Uh, MIST can uh, help you keep track of uh, how long your volumes and VMs have been running, and it's able to calculate relevant metrics. Uh, this is really useful for tracking your cloud expenses, but it can also be used for charging your own end customers. Let's see, for example, with MIST meter machine, uh, in uh, this case, you will see all the VMs that I'm running and uh, the relevant uh, metrics. For example, how many cores and how many gigabytes uh, its VM has, how long have they been running, and based on pricing, how much you've spent on them so far. And very similar with uh, volumes, uh, the metrics are slightly uh, different here. Uh, here you get the total size of the volume as well as how long uh, it's been running. So this was a demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with new content. For more details, check out the links in the description section below. And uh, thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye.